Hey, yeah. Uh, hey, friends. Hi. How's it going? It's been a little while. Uh, we've been doing a lot of deep dives and podcasts and stuff, but Inside Star Citizen is back. I don't really react to much stuff, but these, sometimes these are good things. So uh, I know we just went over salvage in a deep dive yesterday. That's fresh on the channel if you want to check it out, but we are going to take a look at hull munching. The next form of salvaging hopefully comes with some discussion about salvage charges, but we'll see what happens. Either way, this should be a good one. Good look into some gameplay. Unfortunately, gameplay that sounds like it's a bit further away than I had hoped, but nonetheless, let's get into it. Welcome everyone to another episode of Inside Star Citizen, our weekly look at the behind the scenes development of what my mother calls that video game Jared's making whenever she explains it to her friends. It's quarter three. And if you've been following this show in any of its incarnations for a while now, you know that the road to CitizenCon is a very interesting one for our weekly video content, as oh, we yeah. skillfully avoid all the hot topics being saved for the big now two-day event and use the, that challenge as an opportunity to explore aspects of our development that might otherwise never get a chance to shine. It's an opportunity this quarter to like hole munching. Look at how Rastar is being used to remaster existing UGFs in Alpha 320. Uh, to explore racing a little bit and a, and a new ship. Wait, what? UGFs in Alpha 320. Uh, look at how Rastar is being used to remaster existing UGFs in Alpha 320. What? <laughs> Just drop that in an intro in ISC? Sure. It's a couple more intro. Okay. Uh, we knew there would be more features coming to 320. It kind of always happens. There you go. Um, I, I do hope we hear about derelicts, though. What the heck? Uh, to explore racing a little bit and a, and a new ship that readers of Jump Point Magazine and our social media channels probably already know is on its way. An sure. update to Claudius and how it's being used to create even more immersive environments heading your way. And then We haven't heard about Claudius in like a year and a half. Almost two years now. Uh, spin around the whole VFX department to see what they're up to. Yes, Virginia, it's true. There will be fire. We can do all this and- I wonder if we'll get quantum travel. Our journey to the big two days in October. But up this week, and my reason for sitting here at my desk, dumping just a little bit of SCL into our ISC, is to talk to Torsten and Jacob from the EUPU feature team about the prototyping process, how they test design and programming implementations at the earliest stages, and how it relates to munching, an important component of salvage. See, I would have thought that munching was seeing prototyping back when um, hull scraping whole stripping, whatever you want to call it, was starting to get into the PTU. Because like, yeah, I don't know. That that seems like it would have been worked on at that point, but I guess they didn't have the uh, time or resources for it. And my nightly routine just 20 minutes before I go to sleep. Torsten, Jacob, how you doing, people? Doing good. I am fine. Thank you. All right, so we are here talking about a uh, prototyping process. Um, before we get into it, uh, give me the top level, just the, just the, 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 like the LinkedIn version answer. What is a prototype and why do we do it? A prototype basically can have several facets in game development. And for us particular, it is always about gameplay. And in this particular case, it is about the technical. So, but the, the technical problems that we might face and we might have to solve. So for that, we always use prototypes and uh, playtesting those prototypes is a crucial part in game development where it is mainly used to prove theories, where the theory is either gameplay is fun, does it technically work? And this is basically what, what the, the purpose of a prototype is. Anything you want to add, Jacob? From, from more of a dev perspective, uh, we tend to take what the designer's vision is Somebody's doing the refinery run in the background there, getting them work orders is in. for uh, gameplay. And then we've got to figure out how can we achieve that in the game. Uh, and just as often, that's not crystal clear from the start. So we have to try a few things and see what technical hurdles might be uh, ahead of us that we're going to have to consider for the full development. So what we're going to do on this week's show, the first of our quarter three shows where things are a little bit different, we are going to look at a feature at the absolutely earliest stage. This is earlier than we've ever shown any feature ever. Oh, this is gonna be rough. Phase. Uh, what we're about to show you is not going to look good. 
It's not gonna look pretty. Uh, it's gonna be weird poppy and, and buggy. So we're just warning you ahead before you, know, you take I think what everybody here is concerned with is just understanding how from a design standpoint this is going to work. I could care less what it looks like right now. I want to know how our ship's going to break apart. How are we going to actually manage them as opposed to just like pre-designed cut points and stuff. Take you know? the footage and, and, and put it in your YouTube videos. Uh, what is the prototype that we're going to look at right now? And this will be in my be YouTube videos. Thank the you. prototype for uh, Munching, the next tier of salvage. The idea being we need some way to take apart a larger ship and break it into little pieces so that you can then pick it up in your salvage ships, gain some material from that, and you'll be able to sell that later. But we're going to be looking at just the breaking a ship apart phase, which is what we're prototyping here. All right, so I got it queued up here. Let's take a look at this here. So obviously this is a vulture approaching a gladius. Yep. Um, so for the prototype, we've added in a new munching mode, sub mode to salvage. So all of that hull scraping UIs disappeared. Munch, uh, munch, munch, and we're munch. going down to just what we need for this prototype, which is the ability to break a partnership. Uh, which at the moment is going to look exactly the same as if you blew it up with your guns, but in future that would look rather different. What's happening right here? I see the bar filling up on the left, Okay, nothing's so, happening with the ship. Yeah, so this is the, the placeholder for the actual gameplay that would happen here. Okay. Well, the, that got munched. <laughs> One big munch! Design will have some actual gameplay for what you have to do as a player to break the ship apart, but we put in that little placeholder which is just essentially a timer, a progress bar, based on how big the target is. And, uh, and that is actually on, on purpose, because the, the question that we are asking in this prototype are more technical. That means that we don't have, we shouldn't focus on the gameplay aspect, so we should keep the gameplay as minimal or as simple as possible, and then uh, so that we can fully focus on the technical bits of, of the prototype. Okay, so we saw it. We, we saw it broken into some, you know, what looked like normal debris. But now we got to break it into smaller, munchable stuff. So we'll go back to the video here. So breaking it into normal debris is stuff that you've seen before. But when we have this bigger part, it doesn't come apart into more pieces naturally. So in this prototype, we are uh, just deleting the thing and replacing it with loads of tiny little placeholder pieces to act as the munched apart debris. Uh, what you're also seeing is a prototype for how you will get those pieces into your cargo, which is a little suction field that grabs those little pieces, drags them towards the grinder in the mouth of the vulture, and from there they're converted into cargo. Those little pieces that we saw are obviously uh, not arted and everything. I want to remind people again, we've, we've literally never shown anything in a prototype face before, face before, so forgive me for reiterating this two or three more times before we're done here. I'm going to make a video about this and put it on YouTube and be like, look at this. CIG has given up. Look, they don't even try art anymore. They're putting features into the game with existing assets. This is designer art. Outrage. Are just small pieces to, re to represent the kind of the mass and the, and the size of, of stuff yes. like that we might be using. It's even worse. It's Coda art. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is this is the programmer equivalent of a white box test, uh, where I'm not even qualified to make white boxes, so I just rip off other assets that I found in the engine uh, and just slap them together. So that's what this is. And obviously, without being a prototype, there's no VFX, there's no explosions, there's no beams, there's no, none of the things that would mask this transition that would normally happen, you know, so that you don't see the, the pieces just... Uh, just pop in, you know, like, like, like they're currently doing. So the hull stripping is kind of makes sense because it's easy. It's at range. You can do it in gravity. This looks like it might be kind of difficult to do in gravity, though. Like you have to get very close to get the damaged parts in between those two forks. Um, I wonder if there will be an option to put tractor beams on the end, maybe to pull stuff closer. I don't know. Zero G seems fine to me, at least from what we're seeing here. But on gravity, I'd like to see how uh, how that might work. I wonder if you just have to carry stuff to the ship while it's on the ground. Because don't forget, we're getting 
a very big change in how ships can hover and fly in atmosphere. So eventually it's not going to be as easy as it is right now to just sit there in atmosphere pointed down at the ground. Yes. Um, all right. So that was done on your local machine. Uh, just, you know, you on your workstation doing a local version of, of, the, of the universe here. Uh, the next phase, as I understand it, is to test it in PU conditions. And we're going to go ahead and start this video because this video is going to go for a little bit. Tell me what we're doing here. Yeah. So uh, I'll tell you what we're doing and then we can discuss later why we're doing that. Exactly. Um, what we're doing right here is uh, I want to test a worst case performance conditions. So I am chucking in some console commands to load up or stream in uh, several different landing zones at the same time. Uh, because otherwise me as just one player on the server, I wouldn't really be loading that much. I wouldn't be stressing the server. So I'm going to stress it quite a lot uh, by loading He up says that, but the server like FPS is over 20. Has anybody ever seen that? <laughs> ah, there we go. Now it's dropping. Uh, go appreciably lower. Um, and then only once I've done that, uh, am I going to step into the actual gameplay test. I also noticed you've upgraded from a Gladius to an 890 jump. Yes, because More of a when side I think grade. worst case for breaking a big thing into small things, I want the biggest possible thing, which is going to require lots and lots of small things. Uh, so, yeah, 890 jump is a good candidate for that. All right, server, server FPS is down to five. <laughs> now we're living like we know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, just typing in some comments for the uh, other recipients of this video, because this was... Uh, an internal video for, you know, reviewing stuff. Do you often use console commands to leave notes for people? <laughs> there are other ways, uh, <laughs> but it's the most convenient. So, all right. yeah. so, so we've got, so we've got the server simulating PU conditions. All the, all the landing zones are, are I love how they literally tank the server to simulate our conditions. Just like, <laughs> we'll step down to your level for this one. And we're going to see that immediately that, uh, this breaking the ship apart uh, that we saw work so nicely in the editor, well, I've really annoyed the server here because all of these pieces are <laughs> That's what yeah, it looks popping like. in in a not so great way. And I make a bit of a sarcastic comment about it in the, uh, in the console. Um, but uh, yeah. It's important to create these conditions, you know, to, to, to test these things, not just in ideal conditions, not just the ideal universe of your own computer or even the PU when it's like first loads and nobody's in and everything's great. No, in, indeed. What I'm testing here is worse than we would hope it ever to be. We don't want it to ever be this bad, but we got to test it because it might be. Don't worry, dude. We figure out a way. All right, so now where beams would be shooting to, out, starting to break yeah, the ship apart. We, yeah, there'd be extra gameplay here, there'd be VFX or whatever, but... See, they're not mentioning salvage charges, which is weird. In the editor version, we saw pretty much as soon as the, the big piece disappeared, all those tiny little bits turned up. Well, it's not going to go that way in, in this situation. We're going to be waiting quite some time for all those little pieces to turn up. Gotcha. And so while we're waiting for those uh, uh, pieces to, to turn up here, um, let's talk about what we learned from uh, what, we, what we've learned from these tests so far. Um, uh, obviously, there's some form and stuff, but there's also some gameplay implications from what we've seen. Uh, Torsten, you want to talk us through it? Well, I can talk about some parts that we learned from. Right. Sure. So it's so the best thing that you can learn from a prototype is actually everything that goes bad, because this is the stuff that you can then iterate on and make the the gameplay or the the technical stuff even better. So, um, from the gameplay perspective, so I will just talk about the gameplay stuff and Jacob can talk about what we learned from a technical perspective there. Is, um, yeah, from the gameplay we learned that, yeah, what about big ships? So how, for example, now you saw the Vulture trying to attach to the 890 jump. That is a bit of a wonky situation and it doesn't feel right. So what, what about Vultures actually munching bigger ships? So how can we make that an interesting gameplay. Then um, you saw in the first video what happens when uh, the, the ship transitions into the smaller bits. So the masking is, is a huge topic that we have to solve so that it feels right and yeah. you don't notice that. Graphically, that's got to be the hardest part of this whole thing is like they now have to make it so that these ships can be broken up into custom shapes. Or are they going to be pre-made shapes like the Gladius exploded into? If they're custom, 
I'm, I'm guessing that has to do with kind of the maelstrom damage system, but also that means going through every ship and making sure it can do that. How much more time does that take? There's a lot of questions that we still are probably going to have after this video about hole munching. Um, this is what I consider to be one of the harder gameplay aspects that they've talked about. So a lot of other things you can just hide the materials, you know, but for hole munching, you literally have to take the most expensive and detailed objects in the game and figure out how to allow players to break them apart and chew them down. It's kind of crazy. Uh, one element pops away and another element pops in. So we, we definitely have to mask that. Then uh, what you might have seen in the first part is the conversion of materials. I don't know if you paid attention to the filler station bar that basically fills the SCU crates in the backside of the uh, vulture, but that filled drastically faster than it would normally do with hull scraping. That means that it would be more painful for you to munch because you have to stand up from your seat more often, go down to the filler station, remove the boxes. So this is definitely an uh, issue that we then have to solve because we really don't want to have this gameplay to be more tedious. It's just allow, allow the different... Like, can we take a second, folks? Can we just allow the machine to push the boxes out? That's all they have to do. Allow the machine to push the boxes out and always push them out into space past the loading bay of the Vulture. It's... I don't know why this is such a difficult thing. <laughs> it's like, their design is there, and if you go to the trailer, it quite literally... Sh wow, that's loud. It quite literally shows this happening. Look at this. The box comes out. There's already one there. This box pushes that one out of the way. It's in the trailer. Like, even the artists making the videos were like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Why doesn't it work like this? Clearly, this is going to be a problem. And, like, we all load vultures with the cargo ship out back anyways. How great would it be if that thing just pushed those boxes all the way out the, the, the bay? They floated off into space. You could pick them up in another ship. You could leave them there where you were already salvaging for somebody else to pick up. Or you could take the time. Like, they could give us the option of taking the time to go out, get the boxes, and organize them so they don't go out the back. I just... It seems like a really obvious one. I, I hope that can get answered on a Star Citizen Live or something, but... Yeah, clearly, they're going to have to do something with it when Hole Munching comes in. Then it has, has to be. <laughs> so we have to find a solution how we can make it more, like... Uh, yeah, much nicer for, for the player to actually remove those crates there. Then uh, the, the navigation around the pieces is also something that we notice isn't that fun. So we will probably utilize the tractor beams there because we are anyway working on them. But maybe that makes it much easier for players instead of flying around and getting the pieces between the fork. I would say that's also probably going to be something that's easier once we have a... Uh... What their plans are, I believe, are like a 3D wireframe kind of mesh of the area around your ship so that you can use that for landing, you can use that for very close quarters maneuvers. And I think for things like this, that'd be really useful too. Something like what you've seen from the landing camera on Elite Dangerous or on Star Citizen back before 3.0. Um, but yeah, tractor beams would be nice too. Uh, of the Vulture and then having it disintegrate, but instead you pulling those, the pieces in with a tractor beam. Uh, the, the fork of the wool is very limiting in terms of what pieces will fit. So this is also something we learned. And a big thing is, uh, what which already is standing out, is how can we make it fun and unique for the reclaimer. So we just were looking in the prototype at the vulture, And the big question that our team was asking uh, in the end of that prototype was like, okay, how can we facilitate the, the claw? and the uniqueness visuals or the uniqueness in general of the reclaimer to see that's going to be this is going to be hard to do to actually facilitate that gameplay and have it stand out and be meaningful and fun all right so a lot of a lot of gameplay a lot of ga gameplay yes. implications from just that little prototype uh, uh jacob wh what was your what was your takeaways uh from the from the tech perspective i'm looking at things like the performance and also uh just um 
what am I going to have to account for to achieve the designer's vision here? Uh, and I know that we're going to want things like the time that it takes to destroy something to be somewhat proportional for its size and mass. But from the initial prototype, I could already see that uh, uh, a bigger piece taking longer. Uh, it already takes you know, a few seconds with the Gladius if we're going to scale that up uh, and, and scale up the time as well proportionally. To a, to a big target, we're going to have to think about what equation are we going to use for scaling that so that it doesn't take you ages, uh, to, like sitting there for minutes to, to, to break something apart. Yeah. Um, i got to think about how I'm going to f uh, hook in the visual effects and the audio, whatever, what dependencies uh, am I going to need to um, make, well, get involved. Speaking of... This is how I used to feel loading into 3.18 when we first started. Like... <laughs> Entitlement processing. Uh, am I going to need to... Entitlement processing. <laughs> um, make, well, get involved. Speaking of, you know, judging time, uh, the entity system uh, is taking a little bit of time to spawn all the spawn and debris. We've been talking. Uh, this is still going at the moment. <laughs> Obviously, there's going to have to be some optimization work there with the entity system. This is uh, a kind of... What we've got with, with PES uh, is that uh, it's not quite as quick to create entities as before we had PES. Um, and you know, we have all sorts of great stuff that comes with PES. So this is just a small limitation that we have to learn to work around. Uh, but it tells us that gameplay ideas that we had before PES might need some adaptation in order to work efficiently. Oh boy, that's, there's a statement. And I bet that that rings true for server meshing as well, which is probably part of the reason we just didn't see some stuff come in before PES or server meshing. Because uh, if they had completed the game and then brought in server meshing, would they? How much of the stuff would they have had to redone? Uh, in the, the, the post PES world. So yeah. So speaking of which, let's go back to the video. I think we're about to get the entity spawns now. And he's saying this yeah, they should be here. <laughs> while we've should been be here talking. any moment now. Yes. There we go. Uh, there we go. And a bit of a flicker as they come in, but they're finally here. So, yeah, this this tells us well. In this worst case scenario, uh, this performance is obviously unacceptable. Uh, we're going to have to do something about this. So we are thinking about uh, how can we change our approach? How can we optimize what we've got? Discussions in various different directions. Uh, but this is a key takeaway from this prototype, because if it had gone differently, if if we tried this and the pieces turned up in just a few seconds or so, then we'd have known that this approach on the whole was probably acceptable and with a little bit of optimization, it would work. But that's not what happened. Uh, the stuff took minutes to arrive and that means we have to do some more serious rethinking about how we're going to approach this. The vision and the, the basically the acceptance criteria our directors uh, define, they, they, they are still untouched, right? So those are still to be fulfilled. And uh, even the, the overall vision that we as the team defined for how that gameplay should play out, those, those will be like, those are already set in stone because we all agreed on those. But how the actual gameplay then plays and feels this is still affected by uh by the prototype a prototype like this uh, is really perfect for for stepping in early and making sure that every every tick box on our acceptance criteria is met and uh we can make a better gameplay out of it i i think we, we all have a a, a a real uh desire and responsibility towards you know testing these things uh, as often and as early and under as much duress as possible uh, to as we work to stabilize the PU and you know, m make it a more enjoyable experience going forward. So, uh, Torsten, uh, Jacob, thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us uh, today. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Hey, you look so satisfied. Good job, man. Well, oh, oh. Always a bigger fish. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that prototyping doesn't really look like much of anything, but it's an essential step towards proving out design and performance before all the artists and other devs go in to do their thing. 
that it's just as important to prove out good ideas and good paths to take as it is to encourage developers to seek out another way towards success. And that it's important to continue refining not just the features and content being made, but the very way that we test those things earlier and earlier and under a scale of duress. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thank you for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. See you later, man. Where the heck are the salvage charges? That's my question. Um, for those of you who went through the deep dive that I did uh, about salvage yesterday, it's up on the YouTube channel, like I said, right before this one. There are salvage charges that are meant to take the part of the claw or however the claw separates uh, these pieces. They didn't really, I guess they're not at that stage yet, maybe, where they're not talking about kind of the specifics of how these things get separated. But that I think is a, a good, like, that's a really important piece, in my opinion. One of the, um, one of my favorite pictures from Star Citizen, it's a concept art. I don't think I'll be able to pull it up. Yes, I will. Look at that. One of my favorite pictures from Star Citizen is this. Just gives you this feeling of like a salvage job. You're way out of your league, but you found an amazing wreck that you couldn't pass up. So like you're out here going into this massive thruster. I mean, look at the freaking size of this thing. You're out here trying to find some valuables that you can scrap together and get into your ship. I'm not thinking of flying up to the side of this thing and blowing it up with my ship. I'm thinking about EVAing out here and laying a charge, you know, to blow it up. Make it take some time as long as it's worth the money. Make it like mining gadgets, though, you know, or give me the ability to maybe do it from my ship in a less uh, a, a less um, accurate way. But that was something I was excited to hear about. That's not what it's all about, though. I do like just hearing about this, this whole munching and I enjoy actually seeing this prototyping face. This kind of fills in a little bit of the gaps for me about where they start actually picking these things up, because we know a lot of this gameplay is concepted out engineering um exploration uh i guess bounty hunting was up until this year now it's getting a lot more work done on it but a lot of these things have been concepted out and designed as far as we know they just haven't actually put it into code so they're finally doing the hard work all of these years of talk 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 we're gonna do this we're gonna do that we want to do this we want to do that for a lot of this stuff physicalized components hull scraping engineering gameplay bounty hunting platforming uh, FPS scanning, like all this stuff, we're finally seeing the hard part. And the the it coming to us still hasn't really hit a nice fever pitch where we feel like we're getting constantly good stuff on updates, but we're seeing the signs, 318, 319, um, 320 sounds like a small one, but whatever comes after 320, I think is gonna have some good stuff as well. So I'm glad to see them doing the hard part. It's nice to know where they stand with this stuff so we can get an idea of when they're starting a feature this is what they're talking about starting. Not like down the line or anything, they're literally just doing the prototyping. So this was an enjoyable look, not as much as I wanted, but I think this was a, a good peek into what's going on. We'll have to keep up on monthly reports to see how things are going with home munching, but until next week, my friends, thanks for joining me for this one. Hope you enjoyed, have a smile on your face and have a good one.